Have you heard the catchy phrase, where attention goes, energy flows? It's not quite that simple in getting your goals. I mean, really, if it was, then all we'd need to do is make a vision board and chant some affirmations to go along with it and visualize ourselves as if we've already achieved the outcome and we'd have it. No. Um, sometimes we do get it that way but then it's real hard to hang on to it. Why is that? Well, what I want to share with you over the next few days are some tips, tools, and techniques on how to get what's known as subconscious agreement or subconscious compliance. See, your subconscious is the one that runs all of your habits and patterns. And whether or not you get your goals and keep them or whether it just seems so hard and it's a struggle, it is based on your subconscious. Think of it like this. Have you ever gone to the doctor because you weren't feeling well and they gave you some medication and said, you know what, you need to take this for all seven days? And you're like, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> and I don't know, maybe around day four or five, all of a sudden you just start forgetting to take it. Why is that? Because you didn't get the subconscious compliance. In fact, that's the number one beef that doctors have with clients is that they're not compliant on following through with what the doctor's asking them to do. See, your subconscious is actually wired to take it as far as getting relief. And if you want to go any further and get actual resolution, which means when you set your goals, you get them and you keep them. And then you get to upgrade to the next level. Well, to do that, you have nine laws that you want to follow. So whether you might be working uh, self-hypnosis, uh, whether you might be working with a healingpreneur, whether you want to learn more about how to do this for yourself, you have these nine laws and each one builds on the ones that come before it. So the first one is known as the coin. And it is not where attention goes, energy flows. It is what's focused on has its physical counterpart. So it's like a heads and a tails. I think it was Buddha who said you can take a coin and no matter how thin you slice it, you're always going to have a heads and you're always going to have a tails. Which means that if you have produced something physically, it's because previously you were focusing on something to produce that physical experience. Most people just want to treat the physical. So maybe they've got too much weight, uh, not enough money. Uh, too many people who take advantage of them, not enough support with people that are healthy, just to give you some ideas. And so what they'll do is they'll focus on the symptoms, the physical counterpart, instead of what created all of this to start with. And for many, what created all the challenges to start with is you had a need. Now we have six needs. Four of them are for physical manifestation. Two are for inner fulfillment. We have the need of certainty. What can we count on? Then we have freedom of choices, worthiness, validation. Those four, what are known as core four, are needed to be able to produce the tangible results in your life. And then we have growth and contribution that come in after that, that helps you feel like you're actually making the world a better place because you're in it. We need both of those working together, the inner fulfillment and the outer manifestation. And what typically happens on the core four is that you had one of those needs that was not getting met. Uh, and sometimes not getting met on purpose so you could be manipulated. You learned to overperform for others, to avoid what you needed. That was the focus. And you thought that, oh my gosh, if you could just do for others, that they would see you that they would find you, so that's validation, they would find you worthy and they would want to give you the freedom of experiences by honoring you and rewarding you. 
And that's not what happens because dysfunctional givers are trained by dysfunctional takers. And then we wind up attracting more dysfunctional takers in our life the older we get. We finally get exhausted from it all. So your physical counterparts, the debt, the weight, the unhealthy relationships, all came about because there was a focus on something that you felt like could happen for others, but it wasn't going to happen for you. What do we need to do? We need to upgrade that focus. The law of polarity says everything is created as a whole, just like the coin. You got a heads and you got a tails. So the law of polarity says that whenever we have a challenge, that there is an aspect of our identity that is ready to come out and meet that challenge in a healthy way. Oh, <laughs> and here we have Thor. Yes, he has shown up going, oh, I hear you talking to someone. Can I play? So there's an aspect of your identity that knows what to do to move forward, but it can't because the challenge that you're having, well, the aspect of your identity around that need, the never-ending need that's not getting met, is in that space and place. It's the reason why I specialize in parts therapy for identity conflict resolution. You got one aspect of your personality that's going, no, we have to dysfunctionally give. And then that creates the physical counterparts of what you do not want to experience. And then how you have to give yourself short-term relief with maybe food or credit cards or reaching out to people that you know at some point will use against you what you just shared with them. Just to give you a few ideas. So what we want to do is we want to be able to release that aspect of your personality that got into agreement with the original contract, we want to release it from that contract. But that's not enough because your subconscious will not tolerate a void. So we have to upgrade it. And that's when we give it permission to activate its brilliance that actually got put to the side while it became a people pleaser. And I never know what that's going to be. I've had people that have picked up um, painting and others writing books and others starting nonprofits and others uh, just feeling like um, that, that it was safe to begin to explore more of who they were just on a daily basis, inquiring and investigating different things that would come across their path that would catch their attention. And then that allows your focus to be freed up to the wise woman or the wise man, I call it the goddess or the Adonis, that knows how to move you forward, but it's still in seed form. It hasn't been given the internal environment for impression of increase, for, for fuller experiences. And so you allow that wise part of you to begin to partner with the younger you, because the younger you, whether it was a child, a teenager, a young adult, it's probably got more energy than you do right now. And so you get to bring that energy and that passion to life combined with the wisdom of how to channel it. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. But today is the gift. That's why they call it the present. That is what's known as an authoritative post-hypnotic. It's something that you can use after your hypnosis session to be able to take command and control over your experience as far as what you want to focus on. That's then going to produce the physical counterpart of you getting your goals and then being able to hold on to them through an identity upgrade. This is an authoritative post-hypnotic that I used with one of my clients earlier today. And so it, it, it was the suggestion that every time you feel like you need to utilize more of your passion and more of your brilliance, 
more of your excitement and more of your wisdom and how to use it in a way that is going to bring you out at your best. All you need to do is think about the word present or think about a, a gift box being opened. Oh my gosh. And you are so thrilled with the new gifts that you find every single day. Okay, so the coin is going to be the first one. We have a series of nine that we're going to be going over. So it does not matter what type of healingpreneur, what type of mentor or guide that you work with to get the full results of what's known as transfer of authority or transfer of power, which is where they're going, oh, here's a system. Here's a process that I'm going to teach you. And then uh, you can then utilize this whenever I'm not around because you don't want to be dependent upon your mentor or guide. But here's something really significant. You can't grow, at least in the beginning, outside of the relationship with them. Our brains and our systems are designed for relationships. We only grow inside of them or decay. It goes both ways. And somebody was involved in the original wound, which means somebody needs to be involved in a way to bring about your wealth. So what focused on produces its physical counterparts? Quit just treating the symptoms. It's time that you got to the cause and allow your focus to upgrade. And as you upgrade your focus, you upgrade your identity. As you upgrade your identity, you upgrade your actions that you implement for impact. And that means that you go from goal setting into actual goal getting. 